Hi guys, Addis Hardware Busters. Today we have an all-in-one, a very big all-in-one. Arctic Cooling is well known for its high performance per buck or Euro products and the Liquid Freezer 2 420 is no exception since it costs only 120 euros. In comparison, similar dimensions and performance all-in-ones usually cost over 150 euros with some of them being close to 200 euros wow that's very expensive to keep the cost down active cooling didn't use any sgb fans still the cooler uses pwm fans and besides the ones in the radiator it also has a small 40 millimeter fan on the block which is for cooling down the main boards vrms this is a smart idea since VRM cooling is a major pain for most mainboards, unfortunately. Air coolers with horizontally installed fans provide the best possible cooling for the VRMs, but uh, this design is not efficient for high thermal loads and it doesn't offer good RAM and GPU clearance and this is the worst part of it. In the next parts of this video, you will see the product's unboxing and the product itself along with a brief mention of all of its essential components. Next is the installation procedure and the last part of the video includes lots of graphs that depict how it stands against all popular all-in-ones and several high-end air coolers in both noise and thermal performance. The box is enormous, almost half a meter in length since the all-in-ones radiator is vast and the whole package weighs 2.7 kilos. Yeah, that's too much. The bundle includes all the necessary screws and brackets to install the fans and mount the block onto a mainboard. All popular sockets from both AMD and Intel are supported. In the bundle, you will also find a small packet with MX4 thermal compound. This is the thermal paste that we use in all of our cooling measurements. Finally, no physical manual is provided, but a QR code is given instead, which, once scanned, leads to the web-based installation manual. A look at the Liquid Freezer 2 420. This is a massive cooler and with excellent cable management, since only one cable is used to control all three fans, the smaller fan on the block and the pump. Everything is PWM controlled and although I like the single cable approach very much, I would still like the pumps operation not to be tied to the radiator fence operation. The block's space design catches the eye, but unfortunately it doesn't feature any fancy RGB lighting. I guess the cost of RGB LEDs will notably increase this product's price and will also kill the single connection cable approach. In the block, the integrated 40mm fan helps remove an amount of heat from the VRMs of the mainboard, which usually only depend on the chassis airflow. The block space is copper. It isn't so polished, but this doesn't matter much. Don't forget to remove the plastic label before you install the cooler. The pump is inside the block and can spin from 800 to 2000 RPM while the small fan on the block spins from 1000 to 3000 rpm. Uh, their maximum combined power consumption is only 2.7 watts. The tubes have 6 mm inner diameter and their length reaches 450 mm. They are flexible enough so that they won't give you much trouble during the installation process. I like the exterior design. They look like small snakes. The radiator is made of aluminum and its footprint is enormous, so you will need a large chassis to accommodate it. It uses three Arctic P14 PWM fans with 140mm diameter. Their speed range is from 200 only to 1700 RPM. Thanks to the fluid dynamic bearings, these fans will have low noise output and high lifetime. Please keep in mind here that Arctic cooling states the 1700 RPM, I measured uh, lower speeds in my test. Installation procedure. Installing the block on, onto a compatible mainboard socket is a straightforward procedure. 
We only had a slight problem installing the backplates washers since the corresponding threads are relatively short. Other than that, the rest installation steps are easy to follow and the single connection to the mainboard's heater saves you from lots of trouble, especially during cable management. If you want to use stronger fans at some point, it will be better to use dedicated cables and not the single one, which could overload the 4-pin header on the mainboard. With its fan spinning at 70% of their max rated speed, the freezer outputs close to 24 dBA, so it is almost inaudible. See how close it is to the Noctua NHD15 air cooler, known for its silent operation. Fan noise comparison, 100% fan speed, Arctix big all-in-one managers to get a better place than Noctua's high-end air cooler with all fans spinning at full speed. This is an impressive result and uh, take a look at how loud the rest all-in-ones are. Thermal performance with a fans at 20 dBA. Top performance here against all air coolers. Fans at 25 dBA. Top performance again with all all-in-ones into the game now. Fans at 30 dBA. Third place in this chart below the excellent Corsair H150i Capelix Elite and the Noctua G15. And 100% fan speed. At full fan speed, the big Arctic all-in-one loses to several other all-in-ones and the Noctua G15 because it uses low RPM fans. With stronger fans installed, I expect it to be much closer to the top. Related performance 30 dBA. With all coolers outputting 30 dBA noise output, the liquid freezer achieves third place. Its performance is excellent in this test. Related performance at full fan speed. Hmm. Because of its low speed fans, it loses to several high end all in ones, which it could outperform with stronger fans installed. The much louder Corsair H150i Capelix Elite is 9% ahead with the extreme pump profile activated. Performance per dBA, full fan speed. The performance per decibel ratio is impressive, losing only to dead silent air coolers. Performance per dollar, with the fan spinning and making 30 dBA noise. Thanks to its affordable price, the liquid freezer achieves a high performance per back ratio. Performance per dollar, full fan speed. With its fan spinning at full speed, the freezer achieves good performance, taking the lead from all the other all-in-ones. Time to steady state. Time to steady state shows the time that the cooler needs till its temperatures stabilize within half a degree range from the peak reading. The freezer achieves a very low time here. All-in-ones might offer top performance, but at the expense of increased noise output, unfortunately. But uh, this is not the case for the Arctic Freezer 2 420, which has a quiet operation and achieves good performance while it cools at the same time your mainboard VRM. The cherry on top here is the affordable price. I know that some of you will ask for HB lighting but Arctic chose not to provide it because it will increase this product's price. It makes sense, right? Another downside for some of you, again, might be that you cannot control the fan and cooling pump speed separately since all are tied together. This didn't seem to be a problem in my testing though, where the cooler achieved good performance and personally I prefer to have to deal with as few cables as possible. It is a considerable asset to use a single cable to connect everything in an all-in-one with four fans installed. If you are searching now for a large and silent all-in-one, you should put the Active Freezer 2 420 on top of your list. This is a great product. Pros. Affordable price given its features, good performance, silent operation, high build quality, FTB and PWM control fans, single cable connection to the system. Cons, only two. 
Lack of RGB lighting can be a problem for some, not for me, and huge radiator and quite large block. That is all. Thank you for watching another one review from Hardware Busters. Stay tuned for more. Bye bye.